Slice of Life Video Production strives to bring the snowmobile enthusiast the most exciting snowmobile action to video, from mild to wild. From snow cross action to hill climb action, the riders provide the action, we provide the show. Slice of Life Video Production. To order, call 1-800-USA-TAKE. Like all journeys, ours had a beginning that would find us heading toward the high country of the Rocky Mountains. The snow season out west can easily extend into June or July, but this is December, and it's the start of our season as well as our adventure. Come with us while we burn our everlasting memories of our best adventures onto tape. Our destinations are determined by Mother Nature. Call us the storm chasers of snowmobiling. For us, quantity means quality. We're into the deep and steep. Anything less is just that, less.
The onset of an early winter had already provided a base of snow that will help the season run well into the month of June here along the portion of the Rocky Mountains. Our journey starts in Colorado, where we were treated to mid-season snow conditions on our first couple of visits to the mountains. After a hard day's ride, it's time to head back to the cabin to relax, enjoy the food, the company of our friends, and a few good stories. Speaking of stories, here, one of the riders appears to be suffering from a rare high-altitude sickness called cornisosis, normally caused from rapid freefalls off wind drifts and mountains. However, similar effects can also be duplicated with a little brown bottle with a Budweiser label. Somebody took my key. With cornisosis being contagious, the ladies found it necessary to remove the keys from the sled so no one would suffer from crashosis. Our journey in search of the steep and deep has led us to the mountains of South Wyoming. The terrain in this particular area is different than any we have ever ridden. On good days when the snow is fresh and the sun is bright, there just is no better riding. The conditions are extreme with all its wind drifts, blowouts, and cornices, but that's what draws us to this area. The unknown, the adventure, the rush, and the freedom to challenge oneself. It's the steep mountains and the wind-sculptured snow terrain that will push you to your own personal limits, to the edge and beyond. One of the local customs in the Rocky Mountains is high marking. What is high marking? It's king of the hill for the not so grown ups, the ultimate bragging rights. But the price you pay can be high, very high. It can get real dangerous and expensive up there. Watch your step when you're powder bound. This guy gets a sore butt and a new snowmobile. $200 a month for 36 months and it's all gone in four seconds. Try explaining this to your insurance agent. So you think it's only guys on the powder bound crew? 
These lovely ladies will blow your doors off. While some of the northern Rocky Mountain states had not received their fair share of snow to date, we chose to stay closer to home where some of the areas had received over 25 feet of snow in less than a month. And that reminded us of a phrase we heard once, if you have to measure it in inches, what's the purpose? It ain't enough. But this was what we had been waiting for. The snowmobile parking areas would not be plowed for at least a couple weeks. So we found a wide spot in the road, unloaded, and literally disappeared. Powder riding, we live for it. It's about the excitement, it's about the challenge, it's about the freedom to explore. We grew up in the Rocky Mountains riding snowmobiles, and there's just no better place to be. Some say we're lucky to live here. I say it's a choice. It's an adventure. For us, it's a way of life. The world's a better place when you're 200 miles away from the hustle bustle of everyday life. Snowmobiling to me is about pushing the boundaries of both the machine and yourself to take the challenge and attempt to conquer the ever-changing obstacles formed by the wind and the snow. Adventure snowmobiling helps me keep things in perspective. It allows me to work out what's important, doing something I just wasn't sure I could do, to find your limits and push beyond. No time to think, just time to respond. Every ride's a new challenge, every day a new adventure. Life's always just a little better when you're powder bound. The season is nearing springtime and it was time to load up and head north for two weeks for some of the most exciting snowmobile events to be found anywhere. The World Snowmobile Expo in West Yellowstone, Montana and the 21st running of the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb. Our first stop was at our good friend's place, the Lion's Head Resort, just on the outskirts of West Yellowstone, Montana. We had a couple days to kill before the expo, so it was time to hook up with some locals and see the sights. A word to the wise, if you're riding a stock machine with this group, there'll be a ride going on, but you won't be part of it. The riding in some of these areas is breathtaking to say the least. This area is definitely not recommended for night riding. The springtime temperatures in the Rockies allows the rivers to flow high. And wouldn't you know it, the river passes right over our trail leading home. The less inclined rider would use the bridge downstream. But less inclined riders would make for a boring video. Here is a case of not enough throttle. And here's a case of not enough gas. When water skipping, always, always turn on your gas because such a simple mistake can get you a little wet, not to mention the last 10 miles back to the lodge really bites. 
It was time to move on into West Yellowstone for the World Snowmobile Expo. The Expo brings the world of snowmobiling together for three event-filled days. Here's something you don't see every day. Can you imagine going powder-bound on this vintage iron? The Expo attracts everything from 1960-era machines to the what's new in the world of snowmobiling. Here's your solution for those springtime water crossings. And when in the west, watch where you park your machine. No parking means no parking. Our lodging in Yellowstone was graciously provided by the Stagecoach Inn. And what a blessing that turned out to be. Here we find some of our crew downstairs trying to win enough money on the poker table to pay for damages from the day's ride. Those who didn't do any damage to their sleds will find their unit proudly displayed down the street at the local pawn shop. Snowcross racing, it's fast and it's brutal, and you'll find no better races in the West than the ones held this weekend. The Snow West Snow Rider Snowcross this weekend would also be the final leg of the MRP Snowcross World Series. In addition to the Western racers, many racers from the Midwest and the East would also make the trip for the challenge out West. And what a weekend of racing it would be. Want to feel the thrill of racing? Try getting a high five from Chris Vincent at 45 miles an hour. The highlight of the action was found in both the Pro 440 and the Pro Open classes. And all eyes would be on the legendary Articat rider number 41, Kirk Hibbert. The Idaho turned Minnesota resident would battle from the back of the pack twice to win both Pro classes. It was time to head to Jackson for the greatest show on snow, the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb. Our shortcut took us over Teton Pass. Teton Pass is steep, it's narrow, and the flashing sign at the bottom said trucks and trailers not allowed. For some reason, we didn't think that meant us, but the local sheriff was waiting to greet us at the top. $100 fines for all trucks involved, and we were off and heading down the pass. We looked at the $100 fine as just a very expensive toll road that we probably won't use again, at least till next year. Four days to the start of the hill climb, so it was time to head up to the Cowboy Village Resort at Togety for some of the best riding to be found anywhere. We were greeted with some good old western hospitality and plenty of great scenery. We hooked up with two of the local guides for some riding that was just out of this world.
As the days turned to evenings, we were treated to fabulous dinners and then an evening dip in a snowbank. Too much time in a hot tub and you'll find yourself suffering from snow withdrawal. What do you do with all the skill you learned from riding in the Rocky Mountains? Why well, you take it to Jackson Hole, Wyoming for the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb. Okay, tell me, why are you guys here today? Because it's Jackson Hole, Wyoming. <laughs> We're here to see the races. What do you expect? <laughs> which, which races would that be? Well, I don't know. Somebody said they was having snowmobile hill climbs, but I'm not Yes, sure welcome to the is. Jackson Hole Oval Races. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're the second half of the track. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the wild world of snowmobile hill climbing. Possibly the most spectacular form of racing to hit the snow. No doubt, one of the most extreme. This year's hill climb was definitely one for the record books. Ten years ago, the first modified machine crested the summit of Snow King Mountain. Today, Mark Thompson would be the first rider ever to take a stock snowmobile over the top. I wanted to do that a long time ago, and uh, it really feels good. It really feels good. Arctic Cat snowcross racer Brad Paik would compete in his first ever world championship hill climb and come home with an impressive second place finish in the Trail Mod 1 class. Mark Thompson from Utah would return in the Open Mod class and become the fastest to ever go over the top of this brutal mountain. Kirk Williamson would claim two world championship titles in the modified classes and then return to claim the granddaddy title of all, the 1996 Mod King of the Hill. Check out the fans at this event. You'd never guess that beer was served here.
Ken, is it true that this is a borrowed sled? <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> what are you going to tell him when you bring the sled back? Fell off the trailer on the way home. <laughs> After a long season of snowmobiling, it was time to cut loose on the solo ski at altitude. The sensation of slalom water skiing on snow behind a snowmobile. Something new and something just a little different. But leave it to the powderbound crew to take skiing behind a snowmobile one step further. We hooked up with four-time world champion hill climber Kenny Hughesman and his friends from Walden, Colorado for a day on the lake. Even the local law showed up to make sure we weren't exceeding the speed limit. So just how fast do these machines go across water? This one was clocked at 57 miles an hour. That's fast enough to get you a speeding ticket on any lake in Colorado. Here's a sign that says a lot more than you may think. Just like winter snowmobiling, two-up touring can also be enjoyed on the water, but not recommended. There's something a little addictive about skipping across the water on a vehicle that doesn't float. It brings out the true meaning of the phrase, sink or swim. Speaking of sink or swim, the pilot with this onboard camera is cruising the lake with $12,000 worth of camera gear strapped on his back. So sinking right now would be considered a bad thing. Water skipping snowmobiles across lakes may be a little crazy, but it's really nothing new. So we thought we would take it to the extreme. Here one of the powderbound gals tears up the water while skirping behind four-time world champion hill climber Kenny Hughesman. Asphalt drag racing. It's exciting, it's fast, and now it's done on snowmobiles.
from the asphalt tracks of Wisconsin to the mile-high altitude of Bandemir Speedway. Drag racing snowmobiles on asphalt has caught on like a prairie wildfire. Imagine racing down the asphalt at nearly 130 miles an hour on a machine built for snow. Some modifications are required and Pat Houck of Yamaha explains some of the more basic changes. Well, the first thing we had to do is definitely get the ski off the blacktop, otherwise you wouldn't go very fast. And what we've done is we added a pair of wheels in the back, a pair of wheels in the front, eliminated the wear bar. We had a machine out the center so the wheels would go through the ski to keep the ski off the ground. And then what we had to do is go back to the suspension in the back. We ended up adding, oh, approximately 30 more wheels. Remove the high facts so the track does not rub on the high facts. And it was very important where we put the wheels. It makes a difference on the top and it makes the difference on the acceleration. Camoplast has designed a new track for just paved racing. And we have Asphalt drag racing on snowmobiles is a new venue that has hit both the snowmobile industry and the NHRA by storm. And it could not have come at a better time. Snowmobile asphalt drag racing made its big debut at Brainerd International Raceway during an NHRA national event. And what a debut it would be. All four manufacturers arrived with two sleds each for what would turn out to be one exciting weekend. We joined the action in the second round of elimination with four sleds remaining. Round two of the eliminations would see Jerry Houck on his Yamaha in the far lane and Jim Dimmerman on an Articat in the near lane. They're off, and wow, what a launch Jerry had as he timed the light beautifully. The Yamaha in the far lane would hold on in advance to the finals with an ET of 10.171. Next up on the line is the Yamaha, driven by Pat Houck in the far lane and Dave Trigstead on a ski in the near lane. And again, we are off. And oh, a good run here in the near lane, while Trigstead outpowers the Yamaha and stretches the lead to take the win with an ET of 10.2. His reaction time was an impressive .482 seconds at a top speed of 129 miles an hour. The finals would see a duel between Jerry Houck on a Yamaha out of Oak Grove, Minnesota, up against Dave Trigstead out of Rochester. There's a battle for staging. They're staged. And they're off. Hauk in the near lane has a slight jump. The reaction time's within two one hundredths of a second. And it's Jerry Hauk through the lights for the win. They were both very close off the line, but it looks as if Trigstad had a little trouble. Both sleds have good ski lift, but the ski do bobbles as if he may have lost traction. Look at the aerodynamics Jerry Hauk displays as he stays tucked in behind the bars. As a result, he caps off a remarkable weekend with a win at the first ever NHRA snowmobile asphalt drags. His elapsed time was 9.986 and a speed of 126 miles an hour. Once again, it's time to go powder bound in the Rocky Mountains.
Do you ever wonder what happened to that old sled you sold your best friend? Do you ever wonder what happened to your best friend? Well, we found the sled. Sound like fun hanging out with the Powderbound crew while shooting a movie? Well, things don't always work out as planned. Take a ride with our helmet cam pilot. If making this movie doesn't kill him, the parts bill will. And we wonder why the manufacturers won't give us sleds. Speaking of borrowed sleds, ever wonder what happens to your sled when you leave it at the shop over a weekend? Well, that brings an end to our story. We would like to leave you with one safety tip when going powder bound in the Rocky Mountains. When riding cornices, be careful. You never know when you may see a large cornice with cracks. <laughs>